Welcome back. Okay, I've loaded uh, UE4 back up. And what we're going to do first, because we want to see this in progression so you can kind of get an idea of what's happening, is we want to come in here. And one second, nah, let's, let's do it 10 times a second. Let's see what that does. So we're going to go up to package. I'll show the output log. Package, Windows, 64-bit. And we'll select. I'll let it go through and package here. And obviously, it's not going to be as terrible how it bounces around um, because it's now going to be updating 10 times a second instead of 1 times a second. We're still not going to get animation, so our character's still going to just kind of, their legs aren't going to move. And we're also, um, it's not going to be real smooth. It's going to be pretty bad. So we'll take a look at that, and then we'll talk about some ways we can improve it. So I'm going to close this. Uh, so I'm going to come back over to my fake MMO server, and I'm going to hit play. Loads on the other screen. I'm going to move it back there. Every time we do that, remember, it clears out all our data. Well, it's not persistent. And then I'm going to come back over here to our package, run. Okay, we'll move this guy up here so he can see, get a good view. And we'll run it again. Use that as the way to get this down here. Malt tabbing. Uh, this one's in the way. Okay. You can see, it updates faster. Right? And we're doing it 10 times a second. And this is a, this is again an oversimplification. We're just having a timer just call this thing. At, it, it doesn't take into account the fact that the previous one might not have finished. It, uh, you would need a much better method. You would, you would need a queue. Um, we'll talk about that in a minute. But um, we need to improve this. This is, this is not good at all. Um, this is not what we wanted. Um, maybe, maybe work for a space game, but even then, I don't think this would look very good. Uh, so what can we do? We can replicate. I'm hitting Alt-F4. We can replicate our velocity. So we want to go back to our um, player state on our server. We're going to hit stop. And we want to add three more values. Vx, Vy, and Vz for velocity. OK. And then what we want to do is we need to come into our MMO server, not that one, this one, and here, and we need to add player velocity as a vector. Okay. And then we can come back over here, and we're going to want to load those values. My copy. So it's going to look like this. So now we're loading our player velocity with our Vx, Vy, and Vz. And of course, we also want to update that here. That was that line I accidentally copied earlier. And so now um, we also need to send our velocity. Otherwise, this isn't going to work. So we're going to come here, and we're going to change this to a comma. Remove that semicolon. We're going to paste in three more lines. OK, so what we're doing here is we're grabbing our character movement component, and we're getting our last update velocity from our previous tick. And we're taking x, y, and z, and we're sending them as vx, vy, vz. And of course, our server will now accept that here. And there really wasn't anywhere else. We're treating it as an object everywhere, which is kind of nice. So you really don't have to. We don't have to update any of these other places because it's just sending the whole object. You know, we're accepting it. We're saving it in the dictionary. We're good to go there. So we need to do something with it in the blueprint. But um, let's um, let's just double check that that looks good. That looks good, and we're sending it. I think we're good. Let's compile our UE4 project. <clears throat> We'll go and make the changes in the blueprint. OK. 
Okay, so we want to come into our third person character and we want to come here and we now have a velocity. That's cool. And so what we want to do is from this here, we want to get our character movement component. It's usually at the bottom. Get movement. I saw it. Ah. Get character movement. And we want to set our velocity. This velocity is used in our animation blueprint to animate our legs. And then we want to basically come and do the same thing here. Of course, we need to disconnect that brake, drag this off the element, set this and drag our velocity all the way back over here. And now that needs to go to our break. Okay, so now what we're doing is we're saying when we get a notification of a new character, whatever their initial velocity was, put it in there. And then every time we get an update, set that velocity too. So we are going to repackage. Take a look at how that improves it. Well, that's packaging, we'll come back over here and we'll start our server. It's over here, moving it to the screen. And it's packaging pretty quick here. I think it just takes a little longer the first time. And we hear the happy noise. I don't like the urn that it plays, especially after it takes four hours. That one doesn't make you happy. Okay, we're going to come back over here, and we're going to run our fake MMO. As always, we'll move up here, get ourselves a good view. Spin up another one. Alt-Tab so we can drag this down. Close this. Alt-Tab again. Remove this. Look at that. The legs now move. We still got a nasty. It's like, it's it basically, you know what it looks like? It looks like we're getting an update once every 10 seconds. <laughs> because that's what's happening. So that's still not, not making me happy. I mean, that, even if this is 1999, which is what we're aiming for, that's not really good for 1999. We can, we can do better. We can do better. So, let's think about what we can do. We're only getting an update once every 10th uh, of a second. So what if we said in our client, between updates, let's just keep moving at whatever the current velocity we have is, right? Because, you know, let's just, let's just keep doing that. We don't know that right after that person sent us that update, they may have stopped moving or they may have changed direction. Um, but hey, it's only a tenth of a second. So let's, um, let's try moving in the same velocity um, until we get the next update. And let's see if that makes it look better. So close those out, and we're going to go back to our UE4 project. Hit play. So we want to do this in our proxy character. Gonna, we're going to basically use our tick event in our proxy character. Let's see if I can do this right. This was this is since yesterday. We'll see if I can do this right without having to look it up. But I think what we did, I think we took our event tick, and I think we set actor location. And I think what we did is we got our character movement and we got our velocity. And I believe that what we did is we times to that by the float of our delta seconds and then plugged it into our new location. All right, so basically what we're saying is, hey, uh, take, <laughs> that's not good enough. 
That would not end well. We need something else. We need to add that to our current location. So we're going to get our actor location. And we're going to add these two together. So we're basically going to say, hey, we got our current location. And then we want to add our velocity times how many seconds, because that gives our rate, and add them together, and then set that as the new location. Now let's see what that does. So we're going to put an output log, and we're going to package it again. While it's packaging, we'll go over here and we'll recycle our server at the recycle. Loaded up a new window. That just cleared out our extra people. Otherwise, they'd just still be just floating there wherever they were last. Again, these are a lot of other things you'd have to deal with. You'd have to deal with, you know, removing people from the list when they DC. You'd have to deal with removing people, um, only pulling people who are close to you, dealing with hiding and showing and spawning and despawning. There's a lot of things you'd have to have to deal with to really make this um, work correctly. Okay. I heard the happy sound. So we're going to come back here. Pretty good vantage point. Run our second copy. Look at that. It's not perfect. You see, there's still some, there's still some issues. But it's a whole lot better. You know, this, this is kind of what I remember in 1999. Now, some of us were probably playing on dial-up modems back then. Uh, so this was more to be expected. Um, but, you know, it's interesting. It's not perfect. You can see. Uh, but we could spin up a lot more clients in... Uh, you know, you may be able to support a few hundred, a few three thousand with this method. So it gets you around the around the UE4 um, limit. Um, also, of course, we can you know make it so that like as we run away, it stops sending them to this client, and uh, that's going to significantly minimize what this client has to handle. Of course, if everybody groups up in the same location, there's not a ton you can do, but that's MMOs for you. Um, so it's a little bit better. Um, it's it's still nowhere near. Nowhere near what UE4 does. And here's why. So what we'd have to do here, if we wanted this to be UE4 quality, and we could do this, is that UE4 has the character movement component that has a client predictive movement queue. So instead of sending locations and rotations and velocities, instead we would send moves, right? So we would send input. So we would say, hey, the player pressed the key to move forward, or the player pushed up on their uh, gamepad stick. And we would send those along with, when we send a move, we would also send the resultant location and rotation. And what we would do is we would use that to true it up and create a correction system. And so we would basically say, well, you know, the client's a little bit off of where the player is. And we would say, is it within a certain amount of, you know, is it within a certain amount? And if it's within a certain amount, we'd smoothly move it over a few different frames. We'd smoothly try to move it to that location to try to fix it um, so, that it, so that it would sync up. If it's too far, we'd just say, hey, you're way out of correction range, and then we would just teleport it to wherever it needed to go. This is the same thing the character movement component does and why you, get, um, you can potentially get uh, net corrections if you turn on uh, p.net show corrections one. Um, but we could do that. There's a ton of code. Um, I, I challenge you to go to GitHub, UE4, go open their character movement component CPP. I think it's U character movement component CPP. It's huge. There's a ton of stuff in it. We could totally do that. Again, this is one of the challenges. One of the challenges of this type of system um, is that um, we, we have to build all that stuff. There's all that stuff that UE4 gives us built in. We have to build it. Well, there's some other problems too. So when I go to jump, they don't play the jump animation. So I would have to sync, I would have to sync that up as well. We'd have to send that as state. Are we jumping? Uh, and we'd have to sync all that up. Um, if we wanted to 
use abilities. We, have, we can't use gameplay abilities. We can't use RPC calls in UE4. We know have to, every single one of those has to be a call to the server. And uh, we have to handle that all. This is what MMO servers do. You know, if we're talking games like Star Wars Galaxies, EQ, WoW, lots of others from that time period, this is how they work. Um, so there's a lot of, lot of challenges there um, that uh, we'd have to run into. But there's an even bigger one you might not be thinking of. Or maybe you are. Maybe you are thinking of it. It's called server authoritative. So the problem with this method is that we're letting the client do whatever the client wants to do. This is a client authoritative model. So um, they can cheat any which way they want. There's any, anything they do, it's authorized because they're the owner, they're the client. And so what we would really want to do is switch to a server authoritative model where instead of the client sending you know, things like location and velocity, like we said, the client should need to ask it should need to request, I'd like to do this. And the server will say, yeah, you can or no, you can't. And uh, that's the only way to stop cheating. Client authoritative model is not going to have a lot of use. Any kind of competitive gaming, just not going to work at all. Um, the only case potentially it could work um, is if you had a non-competitive game, maybe a social game where you just, you know, maybe it's a VR social experience where you walk around and talk to people. You're like, I don't care. I don't care if people jump through walls. Who cares, you know? Uh, so there may be some uses for client authoritative model, but most of the games out there, you're going to need a server authoritative model. And that's one of the things that is going to take you months, maybe more, maybe years, depending on your skill level, to get that working. Because here's the next problem. Server authoritative also means server authoritative collisions. So as I'm walking up this incline here of these stairs. This is all being handled on the client. That's not good enough. We need to handle that on the server. The server needs to decide where are the steps, where are not the steps, where's the landscape, where's not the landscape. So what we would have to do to support a server authoritative model is that we would have to write a program, this would all be custom, <clears throat> that exports all of our collision, landscape, any other static collisions, from the UE4 map into some serialized data file format of our own choosing. I'd probably do some kind of JSON file. And then we would have to load that into our server and we would have to then enforce all of those. So every time our player requested if they could move, we would have to be like, does that run you into a wall? Um, does that drop you through the landscape? And we'd have to handle that. We would also have to handle server authoritative uh, movement related to other characters and dynamic objects that are moving around. Uh, we'd have to handle all of that. So there's a lot of, a lot of challenges uh, that we run into uh, with this method. I think we're going to stop for tonight uh, here. It's getting kind of late, and so I'm going to stop. Uh, but we'll pick this up tomorrow with a few more videos, and then finally at the end we'll talk about, okay, this method doesn't work. I'm going to give you a way that... As a small team of a few people, you're not going to build this on your own. But if you can get a few people together, you can spend maybe a year or two. I'm going to show you a way that using UE4, you can build a production MMO. You're going to have to make a few compromises. Uh, and you can actually build it. And it's actually possible uh, to do. And we'll talk about that at the end of this series. Until then, you guys have a good night. See ya.